There is this target to recycle 50% of our household waste. Uh, we, as a country over the whole of the UK, short of that, under 45%. But for London to come in at just 33% is shameful. What's going wrong in the capital? No, no it is. The 32 councils who are in charge of this are working incredibly hard. And uh, they would say they need more carrots as well as uh, more sticks. One of the challenges we have in London is the transient population, people living in flats and, and bed sits, which makes it more hard. But councils are really up for the challenge of meeting the needs uh, of our country and the world by recycling more, uh, reusing more and reducing the use uh, we have. And what I'd say to councils is we in City Hall are willing to help you when it comes to the contracts you make with the private sector to collect uh, refuse. The good news is Londoners are really keen to recycle, to reuse and to use uh, less. One of the things I've been lobbied about by Londoners is to make sure we use less plastic bottles by, for example, having publicly accessible taps available mm. for us to fill up reusable bottles. And I'll be making an announcement on that very shortly. Not a speech, uh, not a 25-year plan, but real announcements to make a difference uh, from now. Tell us about that. We were just talking about that with Stanley Johnson, mm. actually, the whole idea of public taps. You know, they, they used to be water fountains, water. used to be in every playground, rather than everybody having um, a plastic bottle. Is there a health and safety issue around those? Not really. What, what happened over the course of years is uh, local councils faced with uh, cuts reduced the availability of, of public toilets, of public uh, taps. Uh, it's not beyond the wit of us to make sure, for example, public buildings provide free water via taps. Uh, we've got stations that could provide them. Why can't we encourage businesses to make available uh, water free with taps. So we as Londoners would obviously need to make sure we carry around uh, reusable bottles. Like You've also commissioned an, an impact analysis survey uh, for Brexit, particularly in relation uh, to London, saying that half a million jobs could be lost, 50 billion pounds less uh, invested into the economy as well. Um, we've heard lots of doom and gloom scenarios in the run up to uh, the vote on Brexit, none of which came true. Mark Carney said we were going to go into recession. We didn't. George Osborne had an had a emergency budget, which we never saw. And I think even your own economists, and he said, have said this analysis is not a precise forecast of what will happen. Mm. Why then tell us? Well, I was one of the biggest critics of Project FAIR, and I was somebody campaigning to remain in the EU. I'm not in a state of denial. We are leaving the EU. What I've done is I've commissioned uh, independent economists, experts, to provide uh, an assessment of the impact of the various scenarios that the government is currently negotiating. And the idea behind this economic uh, assessment is it looks at the key sectors where jobs are provided across London and across the UK. And it's a guide to the government in relation to which options lead to a certain amount of jobs, uh, trade, uh, economic output going up, and which options lead to fewer jobs uh, less uh, inward investment. Would you prefer less that we output. stay in the single market and customs union after we leave the EU? Well, the assessment I'm publishing today, and by the way, I'm publishing my assessment, not keeping it a secret. The assessment, assessment I'm publishing today from the Independent Economist says if we have a two year transitional period, mm. stay in the single market and stay in the customs union, that's less bad for the economy in London and the country than, for example, leaving on, on March the 2019 uh, without a transitional deal and no membership of the single market and the customs uh, union. The bad news is, for the country, the country does worse than London. Actually, in London, because we have a higher concentration of uh, higher value jobs, we do better uh, than the rest of the country. And my worry is, Susanna, that the inequalities that people worry about between London, the South East and the rest of the country will become worse, not yeah. better. Do you feel that you're not EU? just talking to the government, but also talking to your own leadership? Because, of course, Jeremy Corbyn has said that we will leave the European single market and the customs union. Is that something that you disagree with him on? Well, I give credit to the Labour Party led by Jeremy Corbyn in making sure we are working hard to avoid an extreme hard Brexit. I give credit to the Labour Party and Jeremy Corbyn for ensuring Parliament gets a final vote uh, on the uh, say really, really uh, important that they uh, do so and also give credit to the Labour Party for lobbying the government to ensure we have a transitional deal and during that deal we're in the single market and the customs union. The evidence I'm publishing today shows actually that the way to ensure that there aren't uh, hundreds of thousands of jobs lost, we don't have less investment and, and less economic output is ensuring yeah. after we leave the EU 
that we're as close to or within the single market and customs union as we can be. But as of course, to, but of course, yeah. as you say, the analysis is not a pre precise forecast because we still don't really that. know no. uh, what it's going to be. I accept that the point is this, though, uh, Ben, that the British public and businesses uh, should know the outcome based on various uh, scenarios. What the government should be doing is making sure that when they're negotiating, they aren't negotiating for a route that leads to fewer jobs, uh, less investment and a real impact yeah. on the quality of life of uh, families across the country. Okay.